One Love Armband. I mean, what has that got to do with football? How did that merge into the world of football? You know, this is what we're saying from the beginning. Politics and football, we try and keep them away from each other. Because if politics goes into football, which is what is happening, the politics go up and up and up and eventually they will win. So I'm just very um, disappointed. So you don't think that the FAs should have even threatened to wear these armbands in the first place? I don't think they should have even threatened. Because I, I, just, I just don't think it's got anything to do with football. Can I say something, guys? John Fashionu has a point. I know he's being dragged on social media right now for his approach to this whole thing of saying, you know, well, why are they wearing the armbands since when do politics and football get mixed together? And also the whole LGBTQ thing, why is that so important in terms of what these players are doing at the World Cup? And he does have a point, I think. Once FIFA selects Qatar as the World Cup base, unquestionably that is going to raise issues yes. that are going to become political. Yeah. Well, we've said it time and time again. If they're going to award Qatar the, the opportunity to have this wonderful opportunity for football, of course, I mean, you would like to think that everybody will adhere to the rules and regulations of the country. Right. Simple. You think it's just culturally inappropriate to be making a protest about Very homophobia? Very inappropriate. Yeah. No, no. I think that whatever the rules and regulations are of that country, whatever they might be, mm. adhere to them. And some of them might be good, some of them might be bad. But respect the country and say, OK, that's fine. I can't do this, I can't do that, that's fine. If you ask me, and I know none of you have, but this is my YouTube channel, the problem is, in Qatar, is not their laws as such. The problem is a spiritual problem. You have to remember that Qatar is an Islamic country. Their laws are based on Islamic law. They're not based on the kind of law we have here in the United Kingdom, or the kind of law they have in the United States. It's based on what the book they believe the Quran says, right? So, you can go there and protest as much as you want, but they're not going to change it because their laws are based on what they believe and it's a spiritual matter, it's not a legal matter for them. And that's why they're not going to budge on it. And that's why I think he kind of has a point, because you're going to an Islamic country, right? And you want to change the way they do things there, but in order to do that, you're going to have to talk to them on a spiritual level and discuss what their religion teaches them and take it from there. And that's why I think it's kind of a bit silly the way people are going around about this at the moment. That's purely my opinion. Um, and they have said that anybody who is LGBT, LGBTQ will be welcome. They're more than welcome to come and enjoy the country, to enjoy the culture, to enjoy the World Cup. But if they're going to welcome that in, that's going to open up the opportunity to have a conversation. Yes. Yes. So of course that's going to take that double-ended stick, isn't it? Because at the end of the day, that's not what they really believe, I'm sure. And it's unfortunate that we didn't, and I say we, FIFA, didn't look at the situation and say, well, that's not where we're going to have and host the World Cup. That's simple. There are too many red flags going up and too many misdemeanors in the country for us to have a, a convenient World Cup, a successful World Cup. So, your point is, John, if I'm um, reading this correctly, you don't think it should have been awarded to a country where homosexuality is criminalised? Definitely. Yeah, I don't think so. LGBT are there. You cannot say we do not want you guys. Mm -hmm. They're just impossible. You can't. You can't. At the same time, LGBT, you must adhere to the rules and the regulations. So we've got a, a one-two here. It's going backwards, then it goes that way, then it goes backwards. At the end of the day, do not award the World Cup to Qatar. You know, as I'm sure some of you are aware, there are countries where you can't take Bibles. I'm a Christian. There are certain Middle Eastern countries where if I'm caught with a Bible in my bag, I can be arrested, I can be sent back home, and not allowed into that country. Now, I will probably at some point in my life go to those countries. But if you think for one minute I'm going to land in one of those countries and parade down the airport waving a Bible around, I'm not going to do that because... I've gone there to have a holiday, or I've gone there to perhaps talk to officials about their strict laws and whether the Bible should be allowed in and out of their country. So I'm not going to make a mockery of their laws at risk getting arrested, and which would mean I achieve absolutely nothing, rather than just going in there and trying to change things 
in a clever way behind the scenes right? and talking to them again on that spiritual level. The problem with disobedience in Qatar is they have very strict rules. So if you disobey the rules... And they're there. there. It's, it's, you're, yeah. they're there. If you're going to Qatar, you've already read the rules, so you know what to expect. So if you don't like it, don't go there. Yeah, is that not the same as coming to England? Yes, a, bit of, a little bit of disobedience is quite good sometimes. Um, really? And certainly enough people causing uh, disobedience, I think you can, you can uh, have some fun. I think the difference is, John, if you came yes. to England or UK and you, didn't, and you disagreed with something, you could protest about it without then being thrown you into You have a job being arrested in England, anyway. So, you know, I think he does have a point. Yeah, he may have been a bit direct and people don't like that, you know, blah, blah, blah. But I think he did have a point. And people are also saying he didn't mention his brother Justin, but that's not true. He does talk about his late brother. He does talk about when he found out his late brother was gay and, and all the drama that surrounded that, and the tragedy of his brother's death. And I'll leave you with that now so you can see him speaking about it. Thanks for watching, guys. Bye. And one of the one of the important things as well, of course, John, and you know this from personal experience, because your brother was gay, he was the first openly gay footballer, suffered a huge backlash of that. You know, and you've been very public about how difficult you found it to deal with. Percent. And, and I can actually say to you, the years when I first discovered the situation with my brother Justin, there was the same situation then, which was going on. It was illegal. Mm. Forget it. Even myself, yeah. one of the worst culprits of it. We thought that this Justin is crazy, he's, he's mad, you can't allow him to do this. So how on earth would that go in, an, in another country? But, but we are now uh, 30 years on yes. from the sad passing, the tragic loss of your brother. Yes. And you have come to, to understand far more oh, about yes. the subject because of course oh, you've, yes. you've learned about it. A rude wakener. So actually, by putting the World Cup in Qatar, having this discussion, having the players stand there, does that not change the debate and get people talking about it more in Qatar and move that forward? Well, change the landscape there, potentially? I don't think so, because they've got rules and they've got regulations. But for us, it's great, because it gives us more opportunity to talk and more for us to understand what is going to actually goes on. But for Qatar, I think that they've made their decisions and they're not going to change those decisions. And we're going to be hitting a, a hard wall when we, when we get in there.